In today's medical world, patients rely on clinicians to provide the best possible care. That's why Accenture Technology Corporation, an internationally recognized leader, designs and distributes advanced pressure imaging systems that help clinicians accurately assess their patient's support surface needs. Accenture's systems feature world-class X3 technology, superior sensors that perform under pressure, and custom solutions designed for the medical environment. Clinicians and rehabilitation specialists have been using Accenser systems for over 10 years in a variety of clinical settings to help prevent pressure wounds, select appropriate seating surfaces, conduct research, and educate patients. X3 pressure imaging systems provide objective pressure measurements to assist clinicians in understanding how patient positioning and support surfaces impact circulation, recovery, and well-being. Let us show you how Accenture can help you enhance patient care. Pressure imaging, commonly referred to as pressure mapping, is an invaluable tool used to augment a seating assessment. It's easily integrated and can be used in a variety of applications. The three key elements that I would look for is I'd be able to visually confirm or rule out any perceived peak pressures that we may have. Two, I can prescribe the right product based on comparison between different seating surfaces. And three, you can educate the client and the caregiver. Now what you'll learn in this presentation is a basic framework for doing a seating assessment using pressure imaging. You'll be able to review, analyze, and interpret data to make a better judgment on which seating surfaces you're going to select. Pressure imaging is a powerful tool used to enhance patient care. When doing seating assessments with multiple patients, using pressure mapping, the pad needs to be very durable. Uh, I wouldn't worry about damaging the, the sensors in the pad because it's designed to use under multiple clients. And it's also designed with very thin, flexible sensors so they can go in a lot of different positions and contour to the body shape. So to place the pressure mapping pad under the client, we're going to have to ask her to do a pressure relief. That may not be the most appropriate technique for your particular client. You may have to assist with a transfer. You may have to have someone assist with the lift. Okay. Some of the key things that I want to focus on is getting the pad under her square, making sure that I don't have a, a, a lot of tightness in the pad, that I do have it put under her loosely so I can avoid hammocking. So after placing the pad, we want to make sure that it's square and that we have an image that shows up on our screen. If we place the pad in the chair and the image wasn't in the center, we would have the patient do a lift so that we could make sure that we could move the pad so that we would get the image right in the center of the screen. That way, we're not losing any data on the outside of the pad. The first thing we want to look at is to make sure the chair fits them. It may be too wide, it may be too small. We need to check the foot rest and the foot plate. How are they positioned? Are they too high? Are they too low? Maybe they don't use them. We want to check the armrest heights to make sure the armrests are appropriate. Next, you want to check how are they sitting? How is their posture? Are they leaning from side to side? Do they have scoliosis or kyphosis? All those things are very important to check to make sure that we have some sort of idea of what we're going to see before we do the pressure mapping. Sometimes clients will come in and sit nice for you, but actually leave the clinic and sit in their normal posture. We want the normal posture. How do they normally sit throughout the day? We'll get a much more accurate reading on the pressure imaging as well as our cushion selection. So as you can see, we've got the client a little more symmetrical. Now our job is to do a hand check. And the reason we do a hand check is to make sure that we want to have the client not bottoming out on the seat base. And to do that, we place our hand palm up underneath the client, between the client and the cushion. And the reason I want to do that and not under the cushion is that way I can palpate the bony prominence, the ischial tuberosity, or if they have a significant posterior tilt, the coccyx. So here's how we'll do it. I'll have the client move to the side. Let me have you tilt to the side for me. Thank you. I'll go underneath, I'll palpate the bony prominence, have her come back onto that, and you should be able to see that on the screen where my hand is, it's much a bigger area. And that's where I want to make sure that I have a little bit of room so when I 
move my fingers, I'm pushing down into the cushion and not into the seat base. And that lets me know that they're not bottoming out. With our current setup, we want to get a baseline reading. So now what we need to do is we need to record an image. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit record. But we're really not recording any frames right now. What we're doing is you'll see we'll have a green light blinking. This is a preview mode. So we're going to do the preview mode for eight minutes. What that's going to allow us to do is allow her to sink into the cushion, most likely to its maximal depth. And then we're going to record for two minutes. So at the end of the eight minutes, we're going to press the record button, which is this button here. And we want to make sure that we have frames going at the top and a red button blinking at the top. That is going to tell us that we're now recording the sessions. And by doing that, we're gathering all this data for later analysis when we compare the different surfaces that we have in our seating assessment. I'll have you lift up. Okay. And what we'll see on the image is we'll definitely see an ability to redistribute that pressure. Now, with the adjustment process, this is where in pressure imaging we can really tell that we have a lot of ischial tuberosity area that's showing up, but not much femoral support. So we're going to want to change that by doing a little bit of modification in our seat position. What we may do is we may use just some things laying around your, your clinic to change foot height. Instead of getting tools out, we may just want to see how does this change our pressure mapping. And as you'll see, we've changed the image very substantially from mainly ischial area. Now we have good femoral support. And that's just something we may want to do when we adjust this product uh, for final fitting. Again, we're going to do a preview for about eight minutes. And then the final two minutes, we'll hit record and we're going to want to record this data. Why do we do it eight minutes? It's very important to do it for eight minutes because we want to see how this person immerses into the product. Is the patient able to immerse into the product? Again, at the end of our session, we'll hit stop. We'll save our session. And that way, we'll be able to analyze the data later and compare it with our other products. Pressure relief. Great. So, We're going to want to make sure again that we haven't that don't have any overlap. We don't have any folds. We don't. We have it loosely fitted onto the cushion. With the air cushion again, we do a hand check that we make sure that we've got good distribution. We can place her feet back into her footrests. But again, seeing the distribution between the right and left ischial areas and how much femoral support that we're going to have. With all our sessions, consistency is crucial. So again, we're going to do eight minutes of pre-record. And then after that, we're going to do two minutes of record mode so that now we can compare data at the end of the 10-minute cycle. Now that we've collected all the data on the display unit, we're going to transfer that information to the laptop for further analysis and interpretation. As you'll see, we have the three images on our screen that show us the first surface, the second surface, and the third surface. By doing that, it gives us a very quick visual analysis of the data. We can go into further analysis in the three key areas that I like to work on, which are peak pressures, contact area, and symmetry. By doing that, it gives us a very well-rounded idea of which surface is going to be most appropriate so we prescribe the right product. The first key element that we're looking at is peak pressure. You can easily see on here where our peak pressure areas are. What we've done with this medical software is we've highlighted that area with the cursor, done a right click on the computer, and then gotten our numeric value for the nine sensors that are in that area. What that does is gives us a good idea of what the pressure gradient is. So we'll see higher pressures to lower pressures and also an average pressure. And you'll see that on our second cushion much less pressure gradient, lower average pressure. Then lastly, the third cushion, again, very low gradients, very low average pressure. 
And that's what we're looking for when we really want to analyze where the peak pressures are and the gradients that follow. The second key element we're most concerned with is contact area. You can visually analyze the comparison mode and look at which one has more contact area. The greater the contact area, the better it is because we are able to redistribute the pressure to more surfaces than the smaller area. And that's visually apparent as you compare between the first cushion, second cushion, and third cushion. So the third key element is symmetry. And you can visually analyze that here very easily. After we've done the adjustments and we're looking at our ending images, we can see that we have achieved a very symmetrical posture in each of these three seating surfaces. After analyzing this, you can further get numerical values by going to the statistics bar and whichever window is highlighted, that is the statistics for that particular mapping. So based on analysis of our three key elements, we can easily observe that peak pressures are much higher on our client's original cushion, the contact area increases in our second cushion, and overall our symmetry is equal on all of them, but we have gained a much greater surface area on the third cushion. Pressure imaging is a valuable tool. It allows us to enhance our patient outcomes by really identifying peak pressure areas that we could really never visualize before. Secondly, we can improve patient and caregiver education through demonstration and showing how pressure relief techniques can be used and be valuable to helping them preserve skin integrity. And third, quantitative data backs up our clinical judgment and expertise in providing the appropriate product for our clients. Accenture Pressure Imaging Systems offer practical solutions to assist healthcare professionals in choosing the best options for their patients. Pressure imaging is an invaluable tool to conduct seating assessments and enhance patient care. For more information on Accenture X3 technology, visit www.accenture.com.